Three dudes of horror. I'm Toots. Damien. Worm boy. All right, and we're gonna do our review of The Conjuring. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Friday today, and we're doing another one. Uh, of this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How enthusiastic you but, sound. But say, <sighs> but say it, Ruben. It sounded cool. What? Say the Happy Horror Friday. Happy Horror Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Are we still recording this? Oh or? yeah! Oh, yeah, we're live, dude. We're, we're live, live. Son. Oh, okay, because <laughs> this is the live show. <laughs> all right, all right. So we're gonna do the Conjuring. So let me do a brief synopsis. Uh, so this takes place in 1970 uh, to 1971, and uh, so what happens is that this family, the Perones, uh, Carolyn and Roger, uh, along with their daughters and. Uh, their five daughters move into a secluded farmhouse and then as the movie progresses uh, you know there's manifestations of ghosts uh, paranormal activity happens uh, and then they have to call in uh, Ed and Lorraine Warren who are played by Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga respectively uh, and it is based on actual events and uh, so First off, what you guys think of the of the movie? Overall, great movie. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great it was. Movie. <laughs> I will watch it again. Recommend you to buy it. But no, I think it was. <clears throat> to me, I mean, I st I can't watch it by myself. It's one of those movies. I know Damon said on the last one that he can't watch the the Sinister by himself, but this one for me really hits home because. Mm. It's, it's fucking yeah, scary. Yeah, for me, for me is The Exorcist. I can't watch that one. Oh, yeah. Myself. But I thought it was good because the... It started off slow in the beginning, of course, because mm. you're building everything. But then after it picks up, I think, like, maybe, what, 35 minutes in, 45 minutes in, then you start seeing the, the things happening. And I like the part where, like, um, Ed Warren is like, you know, well, she's doing all these things, and, you know, every time she does this, like, she gets like energy more energy so she's yeah. getting tired and you can see it i'm like shit this thing is really messing with with them and to me it's like well they've done this before you know they had more experience but even it doesn't matter you know mm -hmm. and when she says like no it's it's uh something inhuman you know something else like i guess a demon that was the one doing all these things it yeah. is a demon right uh, That's how I just heard. I mean, I don't think it was a ghost. I think it was a demon. That's what I remember. Did they ever like, like give it a uh, title, like a demon or uh, an entity? Or I think I think her name was Bathsheba. Bathsheba, okay. yeah. But it yeah. was a demon. And it was, uh, yeah. In the movie, it was a demon. I think in the real story, it was just the, a ghost of a woman that was there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but in the movie, I think it's uh, she's the one that kills her. What three day old or the son that's born, and the husband's like, no, don't, don't, uh, don't do that, because she was supposedly possessed by the the devil, and she was a devil worshiper, and she ended up killing the the son. Yeah, and, and she curses the whole the the entire land. house yeah. the, or the land, you know. Yeah. So every family has been there, like have had left because of that reason, because it's haunted by her. Um, but like there, soul, I guess. but there have been other women that have lived on the property or in the house in the past that have also killed their, ended up killing their, their child. So oh, then yeah. it ends up there's all these spirits haunting the house from like all different times throughout history, like since the house was erected there. Yeah. And I liked how in the movie they 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 gave you enough backstory on all those different ghosts and entities that were haunting the house to, to make it interesting and give mm -hmm. it substance, but they didn't go too far into it where you got off track with like what the movie's actually about, which is the family and the yeah. with the five daughters and all that. Yeah. And and like they gave it scope. Yeah. But they didn't go they didn't go too far into it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and one thing I really liked about this film is that um, the there were jump scares, but the jump scares were earned. It wasn't like the 
Wes Craven. Oh, it's just a cat. Oh, it's just your friend, like just popping up in the. No, I think they. I think scary. they did that. I think they did that maybe once or twice. But the majority of the jump scares were legitimate jump scare. It was yeah, a ghost yeah. at you. The big one being the the witch uh, on the wardrobe. Yeah, I was, was gonna say that. Yeah. I was gonna say that. That's the one that was like when you're when I was in the theater and you're like everybody like silently or actually says it out loud like, oh shit, <laughs> like, and that was the big one. And what James Wan does right in this film is that he builds up the suspense, which. Yeah. Nowadays, I think that's good because if it's just given to you all in one hit, it's like, ah, oh, well, you already know what's kind of what might happen, you know? Yeah, is because modern modern day horror movies are missing that level of suspense where it's really it doesn't, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to end up with something happening. It's just the anticipation of it, yeah. and that's what you know, kind of keeps you on the edge of your seat. And this is one of the few movies that I've seen, like horror movies. That I've actually felt like a chill go down my spine. Yeah, and then once I saw in the beginning of the movie, I mean, the dog. I mean, the dog, like, he knew something was up. Yeah. Like, and they're like, what? Come in. And he didn't go in. But the next day, you find him, of course, he's dead. And I'm like, damn. Like, this thing is very powerful that it killed the dog, you know? Yeah, and, uh, but I think in in actuality, because it is based on, on, on actual events, is that... In the movie, it portrays it's portrayed that they're there maybe for like a year or something or like a year and a half. Mm-hmm. But I think they were in the house for like twelve years, like ten or twelve years, something like that. Like they were there for a long time. And whatever happened in the movie, uh, based on a podcast that I heard uh, with the eldest daughter, is that she was like, yeah, the stuff that the things that they portrayed in the movie. Is like like just barely scratches the surface of what what's happened in the house. Yeah. yeah I mean, so. And 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 the fact that in the movie it seems like the Warrens and the Perones were getting along, and and in actuality, you know, Ed Warren and 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 Roger actually came to blows at one point. Yeah, because they were just yeah <laughs> they were just uh. You know, Ed wanted to investigate more. Roger had enough. He he was just telling. I, he got fed up, and he was just telling him to like just get out of the house. Yeah. Like, I wonder I'm, if I'm that. Turned. I wonder if that also could have been attributed to like the stress mounting. Oh yeah, it was. From it was what was going on? I'm like, sure. Right? Yeah, it was all the activity, and then, and then the testosterone. And eventually, <laughs> and eventually they're gonna because they're, they're I mean, and, yeah. Because I mean, just imagine a lot of strange things happening in your house. And then these group of strangers come in to investigate, and after a while, you're like, "This is my home." Yeah. Yeah. You know, leave. Yeah. And then again, of course, Ed Warren was like, "No, we got to investigate further. Well, yeah, we have all this a, other equipment." They had already opened the the gate. You know, you can't just be like, "Oh, well, we're gonna take off now," and you know, leave the thick gate open. But no, they had to investigate further. So, I mean. But I'm still freaked out of the movie. I can't watch is, it by myself. But this is one of those horror movies that's like to me is like a total package. It has mm-hmm. everything. Like James Wan's directing, the acting, the, the s- acting like you really said, good. like you said, the suspense building, mm-hmm. and like they take. I like how James Wan like takes time to, but just enough time. Like he knows how to, he knows how to balance it out. Like he he makes he takes just enough time to like build the characters so that you're in, you're like like you're you're actually you care like if something's gonna happen to them you know yeah mm-hmm. and, particularly and, the warrens like and you also have and you also have the musical cues um that yeah. are very reminiscent of old style horror movies you know especially suspenseful movies like the piano. you know or like the violin strings you know like uh i'm not gonna attempt to try to replay it like yeah, but uh, but essentially, essentially those musical cues that kind of build up the suspense even more, yeah. that were used back in like the seventies, the eighties, and it's and it also sets the the atmosphere too. Like you feel more like you're watching a movie that takes place in, back in the early seventies, like mm-hmm. late sixties, early seventies. You made me think of something though that I had forgotten about that 
when they first discover, like, at the very beginning when they first move in and all the daughters are running around playing and they accidentally break the 2 by 4 that's covering mm-hmm. the cellar entrance. Yeah, the cellar. And they go down in there. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I think it's the wife that plays those three notes on that, mm-hmm. like, antique piano. Mm-hmm. And then later on, you hear the entity play those same three notes, but, like, from upstairs, you hear it down in the cellar, and it's the same three notes that she played. Yeah. Oh, uh, that part. Like, that's good. Like, that's good horror. Like, that part freaked me out. And they took their time with it, which, that's why it's a good movie, and that's why I'm scared of watching it. I think that's a great horror movie where I can't even watch it by myself. That, to me, is, like, up there, you know, the 9s and the 9.5s out of 10. And then one of the good jump scares... Also, like what we were saying earlier, because you know how like the big jump scare from the trailer and the poster and everything that sold it when the daughter's playing that clap game with the oh yeah, yeah. where the yeah. mother's playing with the daughter yeah the yeah. hide and clap and uh, yeah and then the hands come out of the dark in yeah. the cellar and clap but then <laughs> but there was one that was not in the trailer that freaked me out like that actually freaked me out and it's during like broad daylight like all the other like she's like the youngest daughter that hasn't gone to school yet i don't think yeah and everybody it's like during the she's day a, is she the one that sleepwalks i, I can't remember i, I know i remember there's one that sleepwalks but i, I think remember. i but think the, the middle where, i think the middle daughter was the one that but the one where they're playing that in the middle of the day and like everybody else is gone like the husband's gone to work all the other daughters are gone to school mm-hmm. and she's in that room with the wardrobe yeah looking for her daughter but she's covering her eyes so she can't tell that it's the, a spirit or an entity she thinks it's her daughter mm-hmm. and those hands actually come out of the wardrobe and clap behind her like, and she thinks it's her daughter because she's covering her eyes. And then later on, she's saying, like, how'd you get way over here so fast? And and the daughter's like, what? I was here the whole time. She's like, you weren't over there in the wardrobe? And she's no, like, no. Like, <laughs> like that's yeah. just, that's good. That's good writing. That's mm-hmm. good directing. That's good acting. Like He's good. I mean, what he does so far, you know. Yeah, the, one, the ones that really made me jump in the theater was of course like the the witch like on the on the wardrobe itself the one that jumps down and the lady in the kitchen you oh know, yeah when the, where, the like, guy's helping uh, yeah ed right yeah because he's her it's like yeah that's it, what you made me do and he's like yeah. what yeah <laughs> Yeah, that I was one. gonna tell you to say the line to. <laughs> uh, look what you made me do, or look what she made me do, like that. And then, yeah, that one made me jump. And I remember I saw it with a friend of mine, and the the part that really creeped him out, and it was creepy also, was where, who was it? I think it was Lorraine, that was hanging up the sheets. Uh, or yeah, and then like was... the wind blows it, and you see the outline of a person. Yeah. Before it hits the before it hits the window, oh, and then the person's there in the window. And the, yeah, the person's the there. Blanket in the blows window. away. Yeah. I don't know if the real story. They spent what eleven years? You said something like eleven or twelve. Uh, if this is only like scratching the surface of the movie, I mean, I could only imagine eleven years. That's a lot. Yeah, and I I do want to read. I do run. I do want to read the books that uh, the eldest daughter wrote. You know, when she got older and. She's talking about the experiences of the of the house, and I think it's like two or three books. Wow. And I do I do want to get a hold of them and read them. Well, um, I guess for me overall, this movie I recommend you if you haven't seen it, recommend it to to see it. Uh, buy it on Blu-ray; it's worth it. It's worth the money. Um, I give it a nine out of ten. That's it's up there for me. Yeah, Damon. No, I get to. Like it gets a solid A for me. Yeah. Like this is a good, not just horror movie. Like it's a good movie and mm-hmm. a good horror movie. Yeah. Right? Yeah. For me, it gets an A, A to A plus. Because it has everything about it's good. Like the story, the everything about it is good. Directing. I mean. Yeah. It scares it scares the shit out of me too. Yeah. I'm still thinking about it right now. Okay. Uh. So. So really quick, uh, if you remember from the last review, uh, we reviewed the crazies, and I did mention that I wanted to watch the original, uh, and kind of give my take on it. I was like, oh, maybe it'll change my opinion of the of the remake. And I saw it. I actually saw it last night. The the George Romero, the nineteen seventy three crazies, and I actually thought the remake was better. 
Uh, and for for a couple reasons. And pretty much what they were is that, um, to me, the the editing, the the way it was shot, seemed very discombobulated. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was there were some technical things in terms of what they were talking about the virus. I'm not gonna get into that. Because I have a science background, so I was just catching all the mistakes that we're making. But that's another, like, five or ten minutes of a tirade. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, but I just felt it was very it was very discombobulated in terms of just the pacing of it. Uh, and because of the low budget, uh, they kind of broke the rule of the show, don't tell. Because mm-hmm. most of the things that they managed to show in the remake, they can only... They can only talk about it in in the original like when they mentioned the airplane that went down it's in the water and it's infecting yeah um but so overall what would you give it i would probably give it i would probably give it like a c maybe c minus so like it it was okay i haven't seen it so would you recommend me to see it Mm. It, or am I gonna waste my time? I would. I, don't I like would. Wasting time. I would say yes, because Damien owns the DVD, so you could just watch it for oh, free. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would say I would say watch it. Well, for in your case, watch it because it's free. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, but I, you know, to pay like full movie price and stuff, I yeah. wouldn't do that. Oh. Yeah. Um, I did. I did like the fact that. I did like the fact that uh, the infected, you couldn't really tell who was infected until you actually saw them in front of you. That's one of those happy accidents because there was no money in the budget for makeup. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. seriously. Like, is, that's one of those what they call happy accidents. Yeah. Uh, but all in, all in all, it was okay. And I, would, I would say the remake. They did a much better job. Well, guys, I guess that's our um, podcast for this week. Um, we'll have something up later. We don't really don't know what yet. Maybe something different for next time. But for now, I guess uh, I'm Warren Boy. Damien. And Toots. We'll see you all later. All right, see ya. Peace.